Hey, home bakers, it's Jack here, bakerwithjack.co.uk, bringing you your weekly bread making tip every single Thursday. Oh, right, yeah, I forgot. Roll it! Hello then, welcome back to Bake With Jack YouTube channel where I share with you a little bit of my bread making expertise every single Thursday, apart from last week. Long story short, my wife went away for a bit, which was all gonna be okay on Daddy Jack, hence, no video last week, apologies. Now before I cut to the table and show you exactly how to shape a Christmas wreath bread, here's a little something you might be interested in. Christmas is coming, the goose is getting fat, and guess what's brand new this year at the Bake With Jack online shop? That's right, it's these rather lovely gift bundles ready to ship to your homemaking loved ones all over the world. And if that person's you, hey, it's time to let Father Christmas know. Find them at bakewithjack.co.uk forward slash shop. Cut to the table. Okay, here we are the table and here's my lovely dough. I've got my little flower pot here to help me out. And as always, the Bake With Jack dough scraper. This is a straight white yeasted dough. I put the full spec in the recipe that you'll find a link for underneath. But for now, it's just been kneaded, rested up for a good hour. It's nice and puffy now and it's ready to divide. First thing I'm gonna do is release this from the table and flip it upside down. Dough's always got a sticky side and a dusty side. I want the dusty side underneath because then it won't stick to the table, sticky side up. Now you may notice my dough doesn't have any cranberries or rosemaries in, which the original recipe does. I've just made a dough here so I can show you exactly for shaping purposes. Essentially what we're creating here is a four strand plait. So the first thing I'll do after having turned it upside down is cut it into four equal size pieces. If you want to get them bang on, you can weigh them out. That's absolutely fine. You can weigh each piece, make sure they're exactly the same, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to freestyle it and do it by eye. Now it shouldn't stick underneath because remember, we flipped it upside down. It shouldn't be sticky under there, but if it is, we can have a little bit of dust, like a tiny bit of dust, just underneath. We maintain control of the dust, leaving this side nice and sticky and the underside nice and dusty. I'm gonna line them all up here at the top of the table. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna line them up out of the way of the camera because I need loads of space. I always make the mistake of putting it right in my way so you can see. Okay, now I'm gonna have dust underneath like this and give it a little push just to degas it slightly. What I like to do is roll it into a sausage starting from the top, the pointy end, down to the flat end, okay? A little sausage like that, and we'll pop it out the way like this. I'm gonna do them all exactly the same. And we're folding in that sticky area, like this, into a loose sausage, okay? We're degassing it slightly, rolling it up nice. Like that. This is step one, okay? We're building the foundation of our strands of our plait. If you're getting sticky, see this is getting sticky here, okay? Have a little dust, the minimum, minimum you can get away with. Dust it, unstick it from your table, and continue on like this, okay? The minimum you can get away with. Then, just brush it all to one side, out of the way. What you wanna avoid is just having dust all over the place. I see it so many times, they've got dust everywhere. We need some grip for the table. Now, starting with the first one I did, I'm gonna roll it nice and long now. We've got a seam here. What I can do is push in like this and just tighten up a little bit, giving it one more fold, and then we can roll it. I'm gonna go quite long, okay? About 50 centimeters long, which is quite long. And the way to get it long is to push down into the table. Push down, start at the middle, do big rolls up and down the table and end at the ends with a little point like that. Okay, now when it's rolled, I'm gonna dust it really nicely. Roll it around in the dust because while it's sitting on the table, it's gonna end up sticking to the table if I don't do anything about that. Okay, while I do the others. Now, clear all the dust back away again like this and go with the next one, upside down. Give it one extra fold just to tighten up a little bit more and then we can roll it out really long. Make sure you go right up and down the table with this, okay? It might make sense that stretching it out sideways make it go longer like this, yeah? But it doesn't. People stretch out like this and it just jumps straight back again because the elasticity, okay? The way to get it long, 
nice rolls up and down the table and a pressure into the table, like this. Go longer than you think, because it will go back a little bit again. When you stop, dust it up nice. Roll it around in the dust, put it up the top, out of the way, next to the other one. I'll do the other two super fast, and we'll come back for the next bit. There we go, okay, we're all done. Let me just show you for a minute. I want to, I want to show you what I'm talking about by too much flour, okay? If you dust every flour everywhere like this, and then you try and roll it long, it just skids up and down the the table on a flower and you end up getting it flat instead of nice and rounded and long. So try not to dust with too much flour. Every time you do one, just remove the flour from the table before you start the next one. And you're all good. Okay, I've got all four strands done here. One, two, three, four. If they're the same size, it's lovely, obviously. Uh, if they're not quiet, don't stress out about it, okay? Give it a little bit of dust all over, just so it doesn't stick to anything while it's sitting here on the table. Now the next thing I wanna do, which is really quite nice, let's move it out of the way, is get my J cloth from last time. We're gonna do the J cloth trick because I wanna get seeds on two of these strands. So we're gonna do exactly the J cloth trick like we did in the last video, entitled, How to Stick Seeds to Your Dough, I think it was without them falling off. So I'm gonna make that all wet. Here I've got two different seeds. Okay, I've got poppy seeds in this bowl. I've got sesame seeds in this bowl. And we're gonna coat one strand in sesame, one strand in poppy, and leave two strands uh, empty, which would be lovely. It's gonna give it a real nice look to the bread at the end. So I'm gonna get this on here, give it a little roll like that, move it along a bit, give it a little roll like that, move it along, get it nice and wet all over. Bring my bowl over, and I'm just gonna pop it in like this. Okay, it's wet and sticky, give it a toss. Like this. And that's all nicely coated now in seeds. One done, let's do the other one. Oh, see what I mean by getting sticky? It even happens to me, look. Outrageous, not acceptable. All right, this one, onto here. Give it a little roll like that, look. Move it along a bit. Make sure it's all nice and wet all over. And that will pick up the lovely poppy seeds. Let's get rid of that now. I like that, yeah. Wicked. Nice one. Okay, it's time to do our four strand plait. Hold on a bit, that's a bit wet, isn't it? It's time to do our four strand plait now, okay? I'm gonna line these up like this, okay? I'm gonna make like this teepee shape out of it. Gonna alternate the seeds. That probably doesn't really matter, but it just makes it nice to start with. Probably doesn't matter in the end of the day anyway. And what I would normally do is stand here and do it this way in the triangle. But what I'm gonna do this, because it'll fit onto the camera better, is I'm gonna stand this side of the table and do it this way, okay? So I never think about this like four strands. That's too complicated. Some people number the strands. I can't get my head around that stuff. So what I do instead is I think about it like two pairs. So we've got a pair here, and a pair here. This is the first pair, and this is the second pair. I'm just gonna pop these ends together at the end. I'm not gonna squeeze them up now. We'll deal with that afterwards. And what I'm gonna do is treat this like two pairs and do exactly the same with both pairs. The first bit on one pair, I go right over left. Simple as that, just cross it over there. On the second pair, I go right over left, like this. Now we got a pair in the middle. Okay, the middle two, we go left over right. And we're gonna cross this all up, up here. We're not gonna do it tight, we're just gonna do them together, up there where they cross together. We don't need to make it tight because it needs room to expand. So then we're back to the beginning. Pair number one, right over left. Pair number two, right over left. And the middle ones, left over right. Are you following? And then we repeat. Right over left. Right over left, left over right in the middle. Right over left, right over left, left over right in the middle. Right over left, right over left, left over right in the middle. I think you get the idea, it's right over left, right over left, what is it? Left over right in the middle, I can almost hear you telling me. Left over right in the middle, right over left, right over left. Like this, okay. Once you get to the end, 
It's gonna start getting tricky. The point is you just go as far as what you can go. And then at some point where it gets too small, you just call it a day, squeeze everything up together like that. Okay, and that is our four strand platen. Now we can address this end. So let's go to this end and figure out where we left off. Now it's exactly the same, it's not the opposite. The first time I did it, I thought it was probably the opposite, but actually uh, it's not. So right over left, right over left, let's go left over right in the middle. Right over left, right over left, left over right in the middle. Right over left, right over left, left over right in the middle. And the same deal, it's gonna get small, it's gonna get tricky. Oh, oh, it's gonna get sticky. There we go. Go as much as you can, squeeze it up like that. Doesn't that look nice? We've done all right, haven't we? Not too bad. Now the end bits I'm gonna take care of with a little bit of pressure and a little roll like that to make them pointy. It just helps us out in the next bit. Oh, there we go. And then we can bring the ends together into our wreath. See how we're looking. All right. Now our wreath is complete. We need a tray with some parchment paper on it. And uh, this, a ramekin. Now what I want to do, what I like to do with this is put a cheese in the middle, just like on the picture. But in order to keep that hole the right size, I'm going to butter this lovely ramekin like this, just with a butter paper that I've saved. Okay, and I'm going to put it in the middle of our tray like that. And then I'm going to take this and wrap it around like this and that should keep that hole firstly nice and round and secondly the right size uh, to put your cheese in so make sure that ramekin whatever you're using in the middle uh, a is heat proof it's got to go in the oven and b is the same size or thereabouts of your cheese because this is going to expand and it's going to puff up you don't want that hole to close up you won't have room for your cheese that way uh, and there it is that's how to shape a christmas wreath bread i really like this way it's quite effective I like the two-tone seeds. If you want to go three-tone seeds, you get a third-tone seed, like a linseed or something. You can make it really lovely. But I think that's quite nice. It's going to rest up now about 45 minutes, and then I'll bake it in the oven. And there it is, that's how to shape a Christmas wreath bread, a real show stopper for your Christmas spread this year. Perfect for your cheese board, perfect for your cold cut selection. Uh, I hope you enjoy it. There's a link to a recipe for you on the Bake With Jack blog underneath this video. As always, I hope this video has been helpful for you this week. We are back on with a weekly bread maker tip. I look forward to seeing you next Thursday for another one. See ya. Thanks for watching this week's Christmas bread making tip. Nice and early to give you plenty of time to practice before the big day. And don't forget, wherever you are in the world, you can treat your home baking loved ones to a Bake With Jack bundle this Christmas. Visit bakewithjack.co.uk forward slash shop and have yourselves a very Merry Christmas.